We want change. We're not out here looting. We're not out here trying to destroy our community. We're going to take our community back. And we're going to do it in a positive way. We are on our way to a peaceful protest in Southfield, Michigan, as we're going to pray and march to represent that black lives do matter and to stop racism and police brutality. Let's go. time because if things are going to change, it's going to change because of Jesus. I want to invite you to take a knee with me, not in protest, but in submission to Jesus Christ and his Lordship, saying, God, we need you to intervene in this nation right now. Wow, this has been a crazy year in 2020. First, Kobe Bryant passes away. Then this pandemic, we have to shut down our church. And now with the death of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and now George Floyd, where the cop put his knee on his neck. This is exhausting. I had so many people reach out to me. I've been on Zoom calls, podcasts, interviews. This is probably the most exhausted I've ever been in our church, but yet it's fruitful. I'm glad that we're having these conversations. And I had a chance to go to Lake Point Church in Shelby Township with Pastor Scott Blanchard. Well, here's the conversation. Number one, just Pastor Scott, I appreciate your heart having a conversation like this. Um, because number one, that, that's the first step. Might not be the end step, but this is the first step. When we deal with racism, uh, for me, it's an ideology of superiority. It's believing a race. And, and actually, that's just a, a social concept anyway, that we all were created from Adam. Mm -hmm. We are typically one, we are one race, different, different ethnicities, but it's, it's prejudice. It's actually thinking one group is superior to another group. And that's just not in individuals. That can be in certain systems that are actually played out as well. Um, but I think some practical things that are important is number one, and this is what we're doing it right now. We're, we're listening to one another. Hmm. And I, I look at Job. Job, uh, he's grieving because he, he lost yeah. something that was dear to him. And for seven days, his friends sat there listening to Job, just listened. They didn't try to give comment. They didn't try to give a solution. They just listened because Job was grieving. When his friends started to speak up, that's when Job got offended because he wasn't done grieving. I thought it was a great interview. I think it was helpful to be able to speak into race relations in our country. But after the interview, one of my friends, who's a white pastor, asked me this question. Take a look. Hey, can I ask you a question? I mean, if you'd be willing to, to speak to I know you got to go. Hey, you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. I, I mean, how, how are you doing? Yeah. You know what, man? I appreciate the question. I was, yesterday, another white pastor asked me that question, and that was the first time I got emotional. You know what I mean? Because even in this, and I know you guys are feeling it too, even in this pandemic, you're giving so much, right? And so I was, I was off of social media even when this transpired with uh, George Floyd. I was like, I'm, I just want to be off. I felt like, you know, and then I had a fellow pastor friend of mine, you know, called me on the phone and said, man, how do I deal with this? How do I answer this question? So and don't get me wrong. I love being here. Yeah. But it's like now it's like I've been on so many Zoom calls, podcasts, and it's like literally had a white pastor friend of mine call me yesterday and ask the question that you asked and said, how are you doing? And I said, wow. You know, even when you ask that question now, it's like I'm getting emotional because it's like I don't even know. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't grieved yet because, and I know there's anger inside of me. On my way back home from that conversation, I quickly realized that I've been spending so much time having conversations about race relations in our country, social justice issues, racial reconciliation, been so many people reaching out and I'm thankful, but I have not become self-aware of my own emotions, my own feelings, not just being a black pastor, 
but let alone a black man in this country. And I quickly realized that I have not taken the proper time to grieve. I'm a young black man Doing all that I can To stay Oh, when I look around And I see what's being done to my kind Every day I'm being haunted as prey my people don't want no trouble. We've had enough struggle. I just wanna leave. God protect me. I just wanna leave. I just wanna leave. I'm a young. Doing all that I can to stay. Oh, but when I look around and I see what's being done to my kind every day, I'm being haunted as prey. My people don't want no trouble. We've had enough struggle. I just want to leave God protect me I just want to leave I just want to And so in a few moments, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna pray, but just as George Floyd was down gasping for air and saying that he can't breathe for eight minutes and 46 seconds, I'm gonna ask you if you're able to, to take a knee. To take a knee, not just in protest, but to take a knee in prayer. Because the reality is all of us will take a knee when we stand before the Father that all of us will confess that Jesus is Lord. Over the last several days, I've had an opportunity to process my emotions. And although I'm exhausted emotionally, physically, spiritually, I know God has called me to keep on being part of the solution to deal with the problem. The question is, will you be part of the solution? Will you speak out against injustice? Because in order for us to move forward, it has to go from conversation to implementation. And so my challenge for all of us who are listening right now, what are you going to implement in your own life in order for justice to be served?